Actually, I want to give thanks to my biology teacher, if he's out here today, Mr. Trom, for giving me this lab coat. So I look kind of more sciencey than I'm actually. So let's put this on and I shall get started. And as an introduction, my name is Connie Chang Chen. I'm a junior here at Valencia High School. And I'm going to try to convince some of you guys out here, not all of you guys, because I'm not a debater, but some of you guys that maybe people should be more like bacteria. And the thing with bacteria is that a lot of people, they don't have a good concept of bacteria, at least. Maybe a lot of the, you guys are thinking, everybody's talking about big things out here. We're, why were you talking about bacteria? And you're right, there's probably a million other big concepts, philosophy or whatnot, that my friends have been talking about that I'm not covering. After all, bacteria are two micron-sized beings that we can't even see. Sometimes with a microscope, we still can't see them. Now, maybe we have to talk about the concept of perhaps that size does not define the potential for anybody or anything to do something. And the best example of this is that we often underestimate what we see on first glance. And maybe reverse in time, for me it was at least one year ago when I took AP European History, or two years ago, five years ago, 10 years ago, maybe 20 years ago for some people out here, that there are some destructive things out here. Bacteria is one of those things. And I'm not gonna show an actual picture of people being affected by Yersinia pestis, which is the disease that causes the Black Death, but in the 13th century, one third of the European population died of the Black Death. And imagine if that happened today, one third of the world's population dying off, we, that would be a cataclysm. And also to reference to my love for biology, and I also love Urban Dictionary because of the great definitions they give on here. But I used to carry a Campbell biology textbook around when I was studying bio. And it's a pretty, one of the things that you learn from bio is that Bacteria is a large source of life because, let's think about it, the stuff that goes through your stomach is digested by bacteria, and there's actually scientists who believe that bacteria were perhaps introduced from outer space by a meteor that provided bacteria onto the life we know today. Now, for my next picture, I actually want the audience to perhaps take a guess what this is. And if anybody's thinking it's a cupcake that's pretty decorated with orange specks or whatnot, it's not. It's actually the point of a needle, which goes to point to show that needles are not very pointy sometimes, and that the orange specks are actually bacteria. And I didn't do an exact count of how many bacteria there are, but perhaps there are a few hundreds of bacteria. Now, a point of a needle being having that many bacteria cells on it, it's kind of scary. Imagine your hands are much larger than the point of a needle you probably have millions or even trillions of number of cells, and that's probably why your parents told you to wash your hands. It's scary if you don't wash your hands. Eating like that, you can get sick. It's not good. And maybe we should delve more into the fanatical side of not even science, but just learning stuff. One of the things I loved in middle school was Greek mythology. I, I literally read through the entire Percy Jackson series probably five times or so, and this is a bust of Dionysus, who is the god of wine in Greek mythology. Now, in Greek mythology, there is actually, Dionysus was worshipped as one of the 12 Olympians. And interestingly, a lot of the people don't really think about it. They just think wine is for parties and for adults and whatnot. But actually, wine wasn't, as we know scientifically now, wine isn't actually produced by gods. It's really produced kind of in a cute manner, bacteria just eating things and just producing stuff. And it's very funny, if you think about it, Greeks and Romans worshipped wine gods as the creators of wine. But maybe all these centuries, we've really been worshipping bacteria, and we just didn't, know, didn't even know it. And to make this more personal to myself, I actually work at an antibiotic-resistant lab over at Cal State Fulton, which is just down the street from here. And as a sleep-deprived high schooler, it's not always good to be doing bacteria running experiments where you're trying to prevent as little contamination but try to discover mu as much as you can about the world as you can. And as I said, I'm a sleep-deprived high schooler. And when I'm working in a lab, let's say October of last year, 2017, I walked into the lab, it was cold, it was chilly, I was really tired, I had four tests that day, and I just really wanted to go make a Petri dish. A Petri dish is what you use to grow your bacteria that you can later test on. 
And one of the themes with Petri dishes is that when you're preparing it, you do not want any contamination. Literally, contamination is the worst thing you can do for anything that you want to test. And so I'm like, OK, I'm just going to mix my chemicals and then heat it up, and then hopefully nothing goes wrong the next day when I check on this. And something like this occurs, and this is not what you want on an empty Petri dish. The zigzags look cool, but that's just bacteria that you don't want on there. And when you're talking about experiments that involve bacteria, maybe some of them take just one day to grow, but everything leading up to that point is so important that experiments can get pushed up from two weeks, maybe even months. I'm not going to say years because I haven't had that happen to me yet, but it's just not good. And perhaps this is a lesson that sleep-deprived uh, high schoolers shouldn't be doing science sometimes. But I'm not here necessarily to tell a story about my fanatical adventures of science, but really to tell a lesson here. I said at the beginning that we often underestimate things we see at first sight. And it's important to think about this because this is equally applicable to you and I. For underestimating, a lot of us can apply this in that we often underestimate how something goes wrong and that it's not always fair for us that we view ourselves as so, uh, not as superior or not as good as everybody else in the crowd. And actually, underestimating is one of the themes in our society that has developed. Especially in my generation, competition is considered such a large thing. You're competing with people for jobs, competing for college spots, and just living and finding a purpose in life. And it's just simply as applicable that we underestimate not only people around us, but also people that we know ourselves. And it's scary to think that sometimes we can't even consider ourselves as people who are logistically able to do something. But I'm talking about bacteria and related to underestimating and also how we also have the potential to do something. In this picture, we have people actually lined up in the form of bacteria. And my reference here is to say this. People are already kind of like bacteria. We are competing with millions of other people to get a spot in society. But the other perspective that we don't always think about is that, like bacteria, we also have so much potential to do anything that we want to do. It's just unrecognized. So let me give, me, let me give you guys an example of this. Let's say, on my right hand here, I have a bacteria cell that will be the cause for all future cures of any disease that we will find. But perhaps on my left hand here, there is equally a good chance that a bacteria cell that hasn't been discovered, that hasn't found its full potential, will become the cause of all disease, the death of humanity, and the end of the world as we know it. Equally as possible is that anybody listening out there could be the scientist that finds the cure for cancer in the future, that becomes a Nobel Prize winning author that everybody wants to meet and get signatures from. Yet, on the other hand, there's another person out there who hasn't been realized that they perhaps will be the one to press the button that will nuke the entire world and leave us in a cataclysm. But the thing is, is that none of this will happen if none of us realize our potential. The issue of potential is that it needs to be recognized and we need to see it in ourselves before we can do anything about it. The point being is this, is this. if bacteria 840,000 times smaller than the average human being can be the source of so many things on life, life, death, cures, diseases, then aren't humans just as equally probable in creating change in society, in ourselves? We have the potential, so the only thing is to recognize that potential and become a game changer. Be like bacteria. Thank you.